Gordon College began as a missionary training school in 1889. Well, Adoniram Judson Gordon, in his day, would be called a man of many parts. Gordon was always, throughout his 25 years as pastor, always resisting the establishment. In his professional senior years, he was pastor, preacher, poet, hymn writer, author, mission executive, engaged in the world mission of the church, denominational leader, and beloved of students. You see during this period the industrialization of the cities in the United States, the influx of immigrants that came in, many people from the more uh, agrarian types of settings coming into the city. And so you have this almost culture clash that's taking place in, in the cities and, and it happened in Boston. One of the critiques of evangelicals is that uh, those in the 19th century weren't involved in the social experiences and troubles and uh, trials of the time. He was, he was definitely involved in it. He started to train Christian workers and missionaries because he felt the need was great and the colleges and seminaries were graduating too few. It was to help train men and women in the practical skills of ministry to go over to the Congo and reach people for the gospel. It was a modest beginning, but one founded on fidelity to Christ and the Christian faith, the authority of scripture, and the call to discipleship. The graduates of the Boston Missionary Training Institute back in 1889 or 1890 were sent out into the world to be full participants in the world, to be servants, to be leaders, to be ambassadors for the gospel. And that's remained true, and in a lot of ways, as Gordon has grown, that global vision has grown with it. So many folks who have been in this particular chair have exercised it with great wisdom. So I was impressed with the college having a philosophy of education that was pretty clear to at least the core of the faculty. There was something there to work with, in my opinion. I think about Harold Ockengay, who in the 1960s and early 1970s helped bring Gordon College to be an institution of national recognition. He was a, a monumental figure in terms of the big, bigger picture in higher education and in the evangelical world at the time. Dick Gross's competence as an administrator combined with Akengay's reputation as an international leader and his scholarly acumen is what combined made Gordon College a strong school by the time I got here. The most important thing and the experience of the student was the faculty member. So we decided to put our resources into faculty. Dick Gross helped build a world-class faculty. In many ways, we are enjoying the significant investments that he made in the academic enterprise. New majors, new disciplines, new departments that were started in the 1970s, 1980s. In the major leadership positions in the college, you've had people who have proven themselves and have provided tremendous stability uh, over time. And that's something that money can't buy. And then our president emeritus, Judd Carlberg, my mentor and friend. Judd has built not only a world-class faculty that I've inherited, but also has helped build out a world-class educational facility. Uh, when it became time for me to do this strategic plan, I had to rally the forces, including the board, and say, okay, what are the priorities we have in facilities? Well, it's obvious by what's happened since then that the priority list was quite long. To the best of our knowledge, Gordon College uh, pioneered a process of global education in the 1950s among Christian colleges. Well, there was a very intensively interested group of people who had a vision for the school. And we had started under David Franz, 
uh, a European seminar? Well, I think it is important for us to, to be global, to travel with students or as faculty members to different parts of the world and also having visiting professors from other countries and how we involve the students in the research and in those trips abroad. My career really started at Barrington College in 1970. There was a professor there by the name of Marvin R. Wilson who hired me into the Department of Biblical Studies at Barrington College. At the time of the merger, we brought up probably about 150 students with us. We brought up perhaps five or six faculty, some staff at the time of the merger. But we also brought up a little bit of the spirit of education because some of the programs at Barrington were more directed to the practical kind of ministry. Uh, for instance, accounting or social work. And now, these many years later, that has worked out beautifully. There's been a wonderful kind of shaping of the educational policy of, uh, of Gordon College between those two schools, in a sense. We're very blessed being located here in New England, and particularly in Boston, home to more college students per capita than any other city on the planet. We're also within driving distance of the financial and political capitals of the Western world. Gordon College is uniquely placed to try and prepare the next generation of servant leaders. There is a foundation that's been built here from the Barrington people, from the Gordon people, that is firm, that is stable, that is steady, and that is visionary and global. By 2020, one out of five undergraduates at Gordon will hail from an international context. So this campus will be poised to more effectively serve the global church and more accurately reflect the full kingdom of God. I want this campus to be brimming over the summer months, not just with Gordon students, but with college students from around the world who come to be part of uh, entrepreneurial mentorship experience where we bring great entrepreneurs to our campus and they help mentor our students as they incubate ideas to launch a new private sector venture or a, a new social sector venture. We want to have opportunities for our students to be engaged in research in the life sciences and in medicine. We also want Gordon to be known as a top five liberal arts college for developing leaders by 2020. Gordon is poised to be the institution that prepares young people for thoughtful Christian leadership. And by 2020, I think we can get there. To me, it means that Gordon is preparing graduates to go out into the world, that we're not thinking about ourselves in some kind of isolation, but in real deep, consistent engagement with the world, that we want our students to go out from this place and do good work across fields, across countries, that we want them to be prepared to grapple with what the world is grappling with because that's ultimately how we're both faithful to what we were in the beginning and how we move forward into the future.